Hey guys, I want to talk about something that's confusing way too many people. It's about your cholesterol. I have not seen a topic that's confusing more people on the internet. You know, for a long time, we've been told that if we have too high of a cholesterol, then we have a higher risk for heart disease. But at the same time, now we have people saying that your cholesterol just doesn't matter. And if your cholesterol is through the roof, then you don't have a higher risk for heart disease. So who is right? Who can I listen to? The more you dive deeper into this subject, the more confusing it can be, especially when you listen to random guys on YouTube like me. So what even is cholesterol? Well, cholesterol is a lipid and it's very important for our body. If you ever hear someone say that you don't need cholesterol, then they're either lying to you or they just don't know what they're talking about. Our cholesterol is what makes up our cell membranes and it can also help make hormones in our body. It helps make vitamin D and it's also important to produce bile. And bile is this substance that helps you digest food. So your cholesterol is made in the liver and from the liver it's transported into your bloodstream and in the bloodstream is where it goes to all the right places. But your cholesterol doesn't just float around in your blood. And the reason is your cholesterol is hydrophobic and your blood is a liquid. So you need something to be attached to this cholesterol so that it can float around in the blood. So you need something that's hydrophilic or something that loves water to be attached to this cholesterol so that it can float around in the blood. So your cholesterol attaches to a protein and this is what's called a lipoprotein because your cholesterol is a lipid and a protein is a protein, so a lipoprotein. So whenever you get a blood test and they measure your cholesterol, one thing they measure is your total cholesterol. And that's all the cholesterol that's in your bloodstream. But you've probably also heard of HDL and LDL. And both of these are different types of lipoproteins. HDL stands for high density lipoprotein and LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. Both of these have different functions in our body. And HDL is commonly called good cholesterol and our LDL is commonly called our bad cholesterol. And the reason for these nicknames is because our LDL is associated with the higher risk of heart disease. If our LDL is super high, that means that we have a higher risk for heart disease. And the reason is because our LDL is what carries our cholesterol through our bloodstream. And if we have too much of this, then it can start to create some traffic jams and it can start getting stuck against our artery walls and it can start to narrow our arteries. And over time, this can diminish the amount of blood that can flow, diminish the amount of nutrients and oxygen that can flow, and it can cause things like a stroke or a heart attack. Now, the reason why our HDL was called our good cholesterol is because it can take this LDL out of our bloodstream and bring it to our liver. So the thought was that if our HDL is high, then our heart disease risk is lower. But it turns out that that's not the case. Yes, if we have a higher HDL, that is associated with having a lower risk of heart disease. But that doesn't mean that our HDL is what causes that lower risk of heart disease. And some studies are actually proving this. One, there's been some genetic studies. So people who are born with a higher HDL, you would assume that they have a lower risk for heart disease, right? But that's not the case. They actually don't have any difference in terms of their risk for heart disease. And also there have been some studies where they purposely raise someone's HDL. And even in these studies, the people who have higher HDL at the end of the study versus normal people, there's no difference in their risk for heart disease. So what does that mean? Well, just because that our HDL is associated with the low risk of heart disease, it doesn't mean that that correlation is what's causing that lower risk for heart disease. So it could be that something else is what's driving that lower risk for heart disease. And that other factor in turn also spikes our HDL but our HDL itself doesn't play a role. So if you ever hear someone saying that, oh, my LDL is super high, but it's okay because my HDL is super high, so they should just cancel each other out. That's not true. But one thing we know for sure, our LDL is bad. And if we have a high LDL, then we do have a higher risk for heart disease. And multiple studies are proving this to be true. So what does the American Heart Association say about your total cholesterol? Well, they say that your total cholesterol should be about 150, that's 150 milligrams per deciliter. And your LDL should be at about 100. So if you keep your numbers around here, then you have a lower risk for heart disease. But is it really that simple? Well, no. And the reason is, just because your cholesterol itself is high, it doesn't automatically mean that you have a higher risk for heart disease. Yes, having a higher cholesterol 
is associated with the high risk for heart disease, but that doesn't mean that that high cholesterol is what's causing that heart disease. Instead, what matters is how many different vehicles are carrying that cholesterol in your blood. So I'm gonna give you a little analogy here. Let's say you have two different highways, and this highway on the left, you have a high cholesterol, and this highway on the right, you have a low cholesterol. So let's say your cholesterol is 200 on the left here, and your cholesterol is only 100 on the right here. Which one do you think will have more traffic jams on the highway? Well, common sense would tell you that the left side, right? Because if you have 200 people traveling on this highway versus only 100 people traveling on this highway, then the left side, the one that has more passengers, should have more traffic jams. But now let's say that the cars on this left side are each holding four people and the cars on this right side are only holding one person. So on this side, you have 100 cars traveling on this highway, but the left side, you have half of that. You only have 50 cars traveling on the highway. Now, when you look at it, this side will have more traffic jams, right? Because you have 100 cars versus only 50 cars, even though there's 200 people on this highway. And again, these vehicles or these cars here are our lipoproteins or our LDLs that are carrying these passengers. But now I wanna say one more thing. Let's say this side now has bigger vehicles. These vehicles can each hold eight people. So now if all these vehicles are carrying eight people, now you only have 25 cars on this highway versus 100 tiny cars on this highway. So now you're gonna have way less traffic jams on this side. And this is one really common thing you'll hear on the internet that I have a very high LDL, but it's not a problem because the size of my LDL is very big. So if you get a blood test, and specifically if you get something called an advanced lipid profile, this will tell you the different sizes of your LDL. So some types of our LDL are super small, like this one, and some types of our LDL are really big, like this one. And what you'll see is people who have this larger LDL compared to people who have this lower LDL, that the people with the larger size will generally have a lower risk for heart disease. But there's a problem here. The problem with this line of thinking is it assumes that even if your LDL is super high and you have a ton of these large particles, that it's not a problem. Well, it still is a problem because let's say you have, instead of 25 of these semi-trucks that are carrying eight passengers, now you have 200 of these semi-trucks. Well, even though they're really big and they're carrying a lot of passengers, if you have a ton of them, they're still gonna cause a lot of traffic jams. And this is a huge misconception that so many people are missing. And a lot of people, and you'll see this on the internet, people are saying that I have a high LDL, but my specific type of LDL is not a problem. And that's just not true. The number of vehicles is what matters the most. And luckily, there's a specific test that can check for the number of vehicles, and that is called ApoB. This ApoB, or apolipoprotein B, is what tests exactly for the number of vehicles that are going through your bloodstream. And this is the best indicator that we have for predicting heart disease. And it's much better than predicting total cholesterol. And you can see exactly why now. So I just wanna kinda of reiterate this point. So here's kind of a diagram that I made of the different types of LDL that you can have in your body. So that small LDL that I was talking about that most people talk about are generally 18 to 21 nanometers in size. And these are the smallest types that we have. And the large types that people have are a little bit bigger. They're 21 to 23 nanometers in size. But you can see that we can get a lot bigger than that. We have our IDL, which is our intermediate type of LDL. And then we have our very large LDLs here. And these big boys can go from 27 onwards. And actually they can get even bigger than 70 nanometers. So looking at this, you can see that there's not much of a difference between these large types of LDL and these small types of LDL that so many people claim make a big difference. And all of these particle for particle have the same risk for causing heart disease. This is why you should not rely on just your specific numbers. This is why that specific test for your ApoB is so important. And the reason is because it measures the amount of vehicles in your bloodstream. But one good thing is some of these VLDLs cannot cause heart disease. And the reason is, remember how I said they can get actually bigger than 70 nanometers? Well, that is actually the cutoff of how big a particle has to be to enter your bloodstream. So if 
one of these VLDLs is bigger than 70 nanometers, then it cannot even enter your bloodstream and it will not cause heart disease. So I hope that can kind of help you guys understand the differences between the different types of cholesterol and what all these tests mean and what you should really focus on. Again, you should focus on that ApoB number. And multiple studies are showing that this ApoB marker is the best indicator that we have for predicting heart disease. Now, it's important to note that there are many other factors that play into predicting heart disease. And this is just a small fragment of it. So other things matter like your blood pressure and do you have diabetes? Are you a smoker? Do you drink alcohol? Do you exercise? What is your diet like? So many other things matter. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. And if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. I will see you in the next video.